Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to what is now our 20th live stream presentation from, you guessed it, beautiful Tlacopaki on this fall day. It's incredible here. If I wish you could see the, the leaves changing and everything else. And speaking of beauty, <laughs> yes, you know, here's an interesting story. Um, growing up, my mother was a painter, and I used to read her art magazines. I'm going to let him go to work. So. And in the very back, the last article in the magazine was the psychology of art. And as a kid, I always loved reading that because the gist of it was you as an artist, your work is reflected in your personality and your work. <laughs> well, clean, classy, and beautiful <laughs> describes Shirley and it describes your work. We are so proud to have you in our gallery and I cannot wait for everybody to see mm -hmm. what you're going to show and how much work is involved in these. This is amazing. Thank you, Ken. So, yeah, we're, we're glad to have you. So, I want to talk about some of the pieces that we have in the gallery now. Okay. So, this is looks to the earth. Looking and, to the earth and, and sky. sky. And so, this is what you would call figurative piece. It's a figurative piece and it's actually two sided. So, this one is where they're looking down to the earth. Ah. And this side, they're looking up to the sky. It's very, it has that Native American feel. Um, I feel that they really have a. Just their feeling for the earth and yeah. just how they, they, they operate. Yeah. This is that. And I used a metallic ink, so it gives it more of a, a bronze look. So it's, but you can see the difference in the colors from one side, and then I've added a little embellishment there. So the blue is the sky, and this yes, is the, the earth. Basically. This is the sky, yeah. and this is the earth where there's a little more brown tones to it. So, Lee, if we could, I'd like to sh look how tight the weavings are. Now, are these called spokes where you have the... Technically, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm working with wax linen in this. Yeah. On a regular loom, you're looking at, they're doing it lengthwise. Here, I'm working at where I have to go spiral. And yeah. so then I weave on that um, from there. Starting from the center, moving out. Well, the really great thing is that what dictates the end result is the product you start with, which is the gourd itself. And you have to look at this and say, okay, what is in here? What can I do with it? So That's right. the interesting thing about this is, I'll let you tell the story, but you cut the windows out, for lack of a better term, and you discovered a crack. This one, I was cleaning it using this one tool, and it cracked. It's the first time it's happened, right through the front. And I thought, ugh. So I cut this out thinking I could still weave it. Five times in and five times pulling out, I realized I could not do that. So I took this piece, finished it just like the rest of the piece, did the holes and then began put that onto it, voila, it worked. Perfect. Well, look at the design. So that was a happy accident. It was because it was. of this. This is more three dimensional. To well, me. I, I love find it. when a gourd comes in, if it has a flaw, sometimes that flaw becomes a de design element. There you go. It's being dictated by the. the That's right. Well, let's look at this one. Hey, Ken and Shirley, quickly. We've got people already viewing All and weighing right. in. We, we've got our good friend Sylvia Herbert. Good Sylvia. morning, Hi, Shirley Sylvia and Ken. Liam. See you tomorrow. Jen Farnsworth. Thank Jen. you, Jen. Uh, beautiful colors, she's saying. <laughs> yes. So we love Jen, so good morning, everybody. Well, please, again, chime in. Randy, our right-hand guy here is... Any questions, please questions ask. questions and any ask. comments along the way. So this is really cool. This is four wins. This is, yes, yeah, and what I've done... I, when I started working on it, again, Native American, I don't know yeah. why. Yeah. And it started going into four sections, and so I started looking up four winds ah. in the legends with the Native American. They talk about the north, south, east, and west, then the colors. Yeah. And I do a lot of research on, on the colors that they yeah. use. Yeah. So that's where that came in. Now, I decided on the back side yes. to do almost like a spider, spider's Boy, net. Boy, that web. looks very, very complex. It takes time. So is this woven separately or it's woven right in place? I, it's woven right in place. Oh my gosh. Now people think I tie it on after the fact. It, you no, know. no. So I, on this one, I take each different section. I kind of work the sections from one and I kind of work it out together yeah. so I can keep it so it works together. Well, one of the elements I absolutely love, which fits the title, is this. The, yes. What is that? It's a philodendron sheath. Now in really? California and Florida, they'll throw them out as trash. Oh. We weavers love these things. Yeah. When they're wet, they feel like leather. And so it's woven right into the It's woven right in. I had to itself. do that first, and then I had to work very carefully when yeah. I weave the top. So once it dries, it breaks. So you're going to show us how you would start with a gourd, clean it, 
prep it and then the, the creative process that would take place and you're right. weaving it. Because hey, people don't see how much quickly, time. Quickly guys, we have another person viewing, uh, Nancy Havanis, if I'm saying that right. Oh, yes. Nancy, yes. Nancy's with Nancy. us. She's from welcome, Minnesota. Welcome Nancy, lovely Shirley, exclamation <laughs> point. I heard it snowing up there. Uh, Nancy says she's also an amazing teacher. <laughs> yes, she took she is. classes, she came, Nancy, I don't know how many classes she took from me. And Again, she would come in from Nancy. Minnesota with her shorts. It's the middle of winter oh. with her shorts on going, oh my God, I know you're from Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> well, that reminds me too, because you've been weaving for years. You've been teaching for years. You've been in multiple competitions. Right. I, I read your awards. <laughs> it goes on and on and on of all the awards you've had. Judges' Choice, First Place, First Place, I've been First best Place. To show with best the, to show. Yeah. So This particular piece was juried into a show up in Estes Park a couple okay, years ago. Yeah. And uh, so that was, it's always nice to get into shows. It yeah. just, it, that's one of the things that's just kind of a little Benny. Well, you have the credibility and you have the knowledge and years of experience. So let's go into what, what we're going to see. You want to segue into right. the prep. So Something else done. quickly, guys. I'm yeah. sorry, but right. Sil no. Sylvia is weighing in again, just says, oh, wow. How, how do you keep the gourd from breaking when you weave? Very carefully. Good. You work Very with carefully. it. Very <laughs> carefully. Yeah. And then Diana and Parents, it just does. beautiful. Good morning. Ken Hi, and Diana. Shirley from Ohio. So Hi there, welcome Diana. To, to Diana. Great. No raven weavings yet, but there will be maybe <laughs> one someday, huh? A lot of folks already viewing, so welcome, everybody. Yeah, So what you. I've done, because I wanted people to see what it takes to get to this point, mm -hmm. is in my studio, I talked about how I come about with my design, and then we did the cleaning, and then I also did talk about the wood burning. And it's just a little segue, a little segment that you can see, and then I'll come back in and we'll talk about what I'm working on now. Yeah, there's so much prep work involved that we wouldn't even know That's right. to see, and, and cleaning. I would imagine when you're sealing and painting these, you have to make sure everything is dust free and That's right. absolutely perfect. So. So go ahead, why don't you run yeah, that? Yeah, so we'll show. So I finally decided which gourd I was going to use for my live stream. And I have a lot of gourds, and they're, they're different shapes, but not all of them speak to you at that time. And I also had to look at what would work best for this so that I can really show you what it takes for me to create the pieces that I create. I started out as a traditional basket weaver, got into gourds after I moved here in to Arizona, and... I probably started in about 2003 or, or four with the gourds, and I found I, I thoroughly love working with them. The naturalness of them, the earthiness of them just speaks. And I find most times my gourds speak to me in terms of Native American. Now this particular gourd, when I looked at it, I, I immediately saw that it was figurative. And many of my gourd sculptures are uh, figurative and Native American. And you can see I've got this little piece here. It's wonderful, and I will be keeping it. I started w roughing out what I see happening. These, this area will be cut out, this area will be cut out, and then I will be doing, drilling holes around here, and then I will be what I call warping the loom, but I, I take my wax linen and, and I, I put it on as if I were warping a loom, only at a regular loom you're, you're doing it lengthwise. Here you're going back and forth and across. Then I'm also looking at doing hair. And to do hair, I've kind of penciled it in. I'll be going in and I'll be wood burning this and, and giving the, the, those lines of hair going down. Now, once I've really decided and true, sure that this is correct, then I'll be opening it up. Now, right now, I don't need to use my respirator. I'm fine with what I'm doing right now. But once this is open, I have to be very, very safe with what I'm doing because it's very hazardous, it, and people don't understand that. That the, working with gourds, is, there's no easy way of getting it to where you want it to work with. You have to clean it. And when I started out, I didn't have all the tools, and boy, was that. I can tell you there are many times I had bad words to say when I was working on a gourd. I have since gotten the tools that are necessary. But when I do open up this gourd, and I will do that outside. I can only do this inside. I will wear my respirator because inside there, there's mold, there's some small dust, and you don't want to get it in your lungs. So I'm now ready to start to take out or open up the, the gourd. First of all, I'm going to put on my respirator. So I'm going to take my Dremel and I'll go in there and I'll have to 
clean that up. But you can see the, the width of that gourd. That's what is so wonderful about these gourds. I get these from California and uh, Wellborn Farms has a wonderful gourds. They're very thick. They're very soft. They're easy to work with. Okay. So you can see what the inside looks like. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> There's all kinds of seeds, um, a lot of mold. And that's what I have to clean out next using my drill and my tools right here. So that's the black. I think I'm still going toward a brown. I'll have to, and it might be that I mix some colors to get the color I want. So at least I know some of the things I don't want to use. I just haven't figured out the right one yet. So that will come. Okay, Ready? we're back. <laughs> so that is an amazing amount of work just to get to the point where you're going to, it to weave it. And what you, they didn't see half of it. This is the wood burning that I did on the back. Yeah, yeah, so you, you took all this and you, you hit it with a torch or something? No, it's an it's a actual wood-burning tool that you come and you can do these. Ah, so what, this darker brown color it's is a, a... It's called gourd ink, ah. and it's an archival uh, ink. and It what, stains the... It stays, it stains the gourd. Um, there's a lot of different colors. This is actually the natural color of the gourd. Boy, Many, that's... Where do you source these? I get them out of California. They're beautiful. Uh, Wellborn Farms is one of the best. I, their gourds are fabulous. They're thick, soft, yeah. easy to work with. And I usually just get them by the box because I don't care if they're perfect or not perfect. Yeah, the imperfections are what you yeah. probably want. Yeah. Well, so then, then your thought process on this was you saw... I saw female. A female. I saw female. And so this is another figurative piece. Yes, it is. And I love the title. What is it? The Elder. The I came elder. up with it just the other day. That and was, is... And I thought, this is an older lady. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I'm tr looking at colors to go along with that. Yeah. One thing I didn't, I didn't show on the tape was this is my base. That's actually the top to another gourd. Oh, so that I see. Well, that's thick. Yes, and it's secured so that it will not fall off. It's not only yeah. screwed on, it's glued on. Yeah. So you know you have to get all that done before I can even start to do. And the how weaving. do you do all that prep work without breaking the stem off? I, th I mean, luckily it doesn't. I mean, I've had that happen. Yeah. And this one, I have still have decided. I, I think I'm going to wrap this, and I'm not. There's something. I'm not oh. sure if I can put horse hair. I've got some horse hair. Oh. I have, that's those are the little in in things. That is work. great. So all this intricacy, you, you had to go through and drill each one of these holes, very but, symmetrical. Right. And then you woven. Is this a wax? It's a wax linen. Linen. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking it. Oh, from spirally. I see. I see. And once I've got that set. Then I can start to weave, and I weave from the inside out. So why don't you show us some of your weaving techniques? Okay. You want to can you turn that a little bit toward the camera? Yeah, I will. Once, once, once I get my needle out. Oh, we got to get the needle. Hey out. guys, Sylvia coming in again, just stating she loves the ponytail. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I do thanks, too. Thanks, Sylvia. <laughs> yes. There you go. So what I'm doing is I've got this. These are like upholstery needles. They're mm -hmm. wonderful. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do is really a plain weave. It's in and out. That's all I'm doing. Now, there are other times I might do something a little differently. So I'm doing, pulling it through, packing it down, continue on from there. God, I can't, I can't imagine how time consuming it, this must be. You're, you're going almost it, a hair width <laughs> with each weaving but you know at one time i never did small things i didn't like all that little stuff but this is meditative yeah and also it. i weave on these very intuitively i don't know exactly what's going to happen mm -hmm. i watch and i look to see what i need to do next yeah. you can see with the tools in my trade i have yes. all these different colors of wax linen to see which ones i'm going to use yes and then once i get to a certain point i know that those are the only colors i'll use Mm -hmm. And then I'll just be repeating them. And this will go out, this is like a shawl going out to the edge. Okay. This will be her dress or something. I haven't figured out what I'm doing there. Yeah. This will be the skirt. Okay. And also I'm hoping to put a, a, 
a, a belt in using some turquoise. I'll just really? string some turquoise on there. And Boy, this is going to be a great element to see when and it's all done. And just so everybody knows, all of these pieces are here in the gallery. They are for yeah, sale. Sure. Um, and they're on the website. And they're on the website. With the prices there. And come on in and check them out. Yeah. Uh, it's always, it's, I think it's always good to see them up close and personal. Yeah. You can really see what's going on with them. Oh, they're beautiful. And they, they fit so well in the gallery because, they, again, they're earthy, they're organic, mm -hmm. and they're very, very classy. And it just fits with the theme of the gallery, which is wildlife and nature. It really this does. It's all from it nature. Does. It adds a different yeah. element to the, yeah. the gallery, it's which is It's a compliment kind of to the work we already have, as far as I'm concerned. Well, you guys have done well with what you, yeah. the artists you've brought in. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's really a joy to be in the gallery. Yeah. I really enjoy the work uh, that's there and, and the artists as well. Yes. So you can see I have to work on my lap, and sometimes I'm working sideways. <laughs> it just depends. So during the entire weaving process, this wax linen has to endure all this abrasiveness that you're going, you're pulling that thread through. What it if does. one of these spokes breaks? Surely. Heaven our, forbid. I cry. Excuse me, guys. Our good friend and amazing artist herself, Kim Corey, oh, is just Kim. asking you, are you self-taught? As a matter of fact, I am. Thank you, Kim. Um, when I started this, a friend of mine and I went to a, I was in, living in St. Louis, and we went to a Weaver's Guild sale. They have a large weaver's guild. It's one of the oldest weaver's guilds in the, in the country, in the state. Um, we saw these wonderful hand wovers that saw some baskets, and we looked at them going, we can do better than that. Oh. <laughs> so my friend found the source for the materials. I found the book, and we started in my basement doing rib baskets. And then fast forward, how many years ago was that? That had to be the early 90s. Really? And we did that for about a year, and then we found there was a basket shop in town so we could get our materials in town found there was a, a, a basket guild for the state, so we started going to convention. And so then I was able to take classes from some really good, known, well-known people. And then you start teaching yourself. And then I start teaching myself. And develop your own style. Yeah, and yeah. when, there was a, about the year before I left St. Louis, I started to do sculptural work. And one piece I was really proud of, took to the, st the shop, and I said, look at this. And the people go, what's that? <laughs> uh, sculpture? They're used to, oh, they're the used traditional. to functional and traditional. That wasn't functional, it wasn't traditional. But your, your, your foundation, being a traditional weaver, really complements what it you're does. doing now. It does. You have I to still have love that. my traditional. Yeah. I love doing it, I love yeah. teaching it, and I even love teaching my gourd stuff. Yeah. But I always want to challenge myself. I mm -hmm. always want to try something new and different, and yeah. that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and I love the fact that you work instinctively. You don't know where you're going with it, but mm -mm. the elements you just talked about, like the belt and the skirt and so on and so forth, what just happen as you go. I saw something the other day, I thought, oh, can I do that? And they, I saw a picture of the Native American, she had a, one of these bone necklaces on. I yeah. thought, could I do that? Ooh, there you I go. haven't figured it out yet. You will, <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> so this is just very slow. Tedious. <laughs> sure seems like it to me. And the, the, the different colors, do you have to tie this off? What and I then you do, go to the next not color? Not really. What I do is I'll lay it in there. Because it's wax linen, Oh, it sticks to itself. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I'll lay another piece right on top of that. Okay. In fact, I can just show you that. Yes, let just, please. Let me just get this to the end where I can... Yes, is this a dental tool that you use to pack it? Or no, it? actually it's called a packer. Oh, it's actually made for weaving. It's actually made... The, the gentleman that designed these used to live in Cottonwood. Oh. And he, they were wonder, wonderful tools. When I started out weaving, <laughs> I used anything I could get my hands on, like a, a screwdriver or something to pack. Toothpicks. And finally, a friend of mine went to North Carolina, and she bought some tools. And I thought, <gasps> well, yeah, yeah. thank God. You know, it, everything comes back to the tools. And I keep telling yeah. my students, yeah. it can be as hard or as easy based on the tools that you get. Yeah. Yeah. Gord worked the same thing. When I started out, I used the hand tools. I can tell you, I cussed an awful lot. <laughs> Every time I cleaned a gourd, I said, why the, am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no I have kidding. to keep it clean. My, my <laughs> niece told me I have to make it so she could show her kids. That's but okay. Then, but, yeah, so let me just show you how I would All start right. another color. Let's just take this one. This is kind of a tan. Yeah, this is like they call butterscotch, but it's like a tan. Yeah, sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back over this and I'll eventually cut this other line off if I, when I want to, just to get it going the same as the other one. Yeah. Then I come back, and I'll get that little end and tuck it down. 
Oh, so you're kind of weaving to lock it into place. Right. Rather than tying. Oh, that makes perfect sense. And you're not going to see the back. Sure. There's exactly. only a little t tail that's yeah. in there. So then I can just go on from there. And, and even I can cut the, this off. The, the thread or, or this is wax linen wax as linen. well, mm -hmm. is pretty impervious to the elements because of the wax protection. The biggest thing is that you can't put it out, you know, if you're going to, let's say you buy one, you can't put it in your car and let it sit there. No, and if no. it's hot, the heat, the heat will, wax, will melt the wax. Shirley oh, and Ken, we have Diana Farrens again, just saying, wish she lived here <laughs> <laughs> yes. so she could take lessons. I love this. Oh, well, yeah, Shirley sometime teaches. when you come, Diana, let's figure out Thank if we you, can Diana. do something like that. Right now, I'm not teaching because of the, the virus, yeah. and I've got my students going, oh, <laughs> but hopefully um, when that dies down a little bit, we'll back to teaching. I teach twice a usually twice a month at the, in my studio. That often. Well, maybe next spring, it'll, little things will calm down enough that's where you can do hope. that. That's Diana, the Diana, that'd be something you look forward to I as well. I have many people that I, they contact me to find mm -hmm. out if I'm teaching a class, if they have a couple people or three, I might do a class specifically for them. Yeah. And I've yeah. done that a number of times. Sure. And, you know, Nancy Hovannis is a good example where she came in and <laughs> she'd find out when I was teaching yeah. and she'd come in. So I do that all the well, time. Well, I can imagine like Diana is in the ravens, which I am too. And so she could do a gourd that's based on a raven theme. She could do it well. I mean, a she dark, could even paint. Dark, yeah. See, I don't do a lot of carving because some people do a lot yeah. of carving oh, and yeah. painting. Yeah. Um, I've done some carving. It's not my thing. Yeah. Um, some people paint where they don't have to open it up at all. Yeah. Uh, that. But even the wood burning aspect would work with feathers oh, if yes, you wanted it would. to draw feathers yes, it on would. a piece. Yeah. The wood burning is a fabulous thing. We're planning have. your future, Diana, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> well, this is fascinating. So I can go. I can continue on. I, I can't even imagine how many hours. Have you ever kept track of how many hours? Because each one is different. You couldn't. Some you couldn't I have. Know. Some well, I you have. have. Yeah, but not on this one. Hundreds of hours. Um, many in some hours. Cases. Um, yeah. I've got. Uh, I don't know how many figurative I've done, but the the, yeah. the time though is really in the the prep part too. Yeah. yeah. But then I had another one that it was my actually my first one, that that took uh, quite a bit. It was a long and narrow one and. Yeah. Well, and absolutely every one of them is a one of a kind. They There's are. no reproducing no, any of this. This no. is all by Even though hand. someone says I ought to cast them, I think that. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it was true. That could probably be. <laughs> that would a be a very, very challenging. A concept. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> uh, I bet we could figure it out. <laughs> we could figure it out. So let's look at the top of this. I want okay. everybody to see how tightly woven. And the, the smaller has got to be harder. It's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and I did this first because if I have to get my hand up there, uh, oh, that's right, you I can reach through here. Right, I see. You really have to think about what the you're steps, doing. steps, yeah, mm -hmm. like cleaning the inside of the gourd and sealing it prior to doing the outside. And you have to get this pretty all set up before you start to do your weaving. Yeah. Because if you don't, you can't get in there. I have another piece that I did. It's a long piece of wood, and I luckily had a friend help me with that. Mm -hmm. And it's a gourd with a couple antlers on it. We had to really plan to how would we put it together and that it was removable. The antlers are removable. Oh. The gourd is removable for shipping purposes. Oh, that's true. Because the worst thing is when an artist comes up with something and then the shipper looks at it going, ha ha, I can't ship, ship it. that. Yeah, and or I've it's had too that. delicate, it wouldn't, wouldn't yeah, survive. Yeah. So that one we'd, I designed specifically for that. Oh, that's crazy. We have another question from Sylvia, guys. Yes. Um, do you work on one at a time, Shirley? Or do you have several in the works at once? Usually one at a time. It's hard. To, I might clean a bunch of them once, but I only work on one of them at a time. Yeah, that's a good question. So let's talk about the raku aspect of what you do too. Okay. And I want to show people these pieces you've got going. So first of all, this is one that's finished. So I did the raku plate, mm -hmm. and then I wove the top of it. Now that's a beautiful. That's a metallic looking. Is it? It is a glazing. It's is a that glaze. What you call it's that? a glaze. And I think that one's my copper penny, but it it's is. got a real uh, copper if color. You to had it. to put all these holes. Oh, there you go from the bottom. I do that in advance. Know, I, yeah, I make that. I put those in when I'm making the pot. So now these are called spokes. These is that are called correct? spokes. You were describing a piece you did as a commission that was where the spokes were seven feet long. That's right. So you're weaving upside down. Upside down. Off of a ladder. Off of a ladder. So you promised us photos. We're going to show that next yes. Friday when you come in. Up and down. It, it was the best thing for my glutes. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm up 
and I'm down because I have to keep the spokes wet and I have to get down to spray it and then I had to go back up to weave and I come back down to spray it. So oh my gosh. It was it was interesting. That now is these are a amazing. couple of pieces that are in the works that that are have been fired. Be beautiful. That I can weave on. Yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful. So let's go to the pieces behind you. I want people to see these how you can just take elements that you find and weave them in. So what is this? This is a geode, and what okay. I did, I had to go in and carve out where the geode was going to be put in place. Okay. And then on the other side, it's yeah. the same shape as a geode, but I wove it. Yeah. That is beautiful. Hmm? What about and this is, this is some kind of a burl? It's a root burl. It's a okay. root burl. Yeah. Yes. And the one thing, the name of this is Spirit Healer, and that came from I did a little research on the geode, and they talked about the healing qualities of the oh. geode. So that's where the name came from, was Spirit Well, your, your titles are great, and they're very fitting to the pieces. I, it takes a while. Some I can I have a title before I get started. Others, it takes a little yeah. bit of work. Yeah, and this is one of your raku pieces. This is a raku vase that I did. Yeah. And you can see, it's just a very simple weaving. This copper is beautiful. I know, copper what is, is this? Just, is that copper? It that's is, That's just right? copper that I wound. Yeah, but you wove it, too. I did. Right? I wove it in, and then... I love using the little jingles, the little oh, Native yeah. American jingles. They really add to it. Oh, I love the glazing on this too. Isn't that great? Is there a backside? Yes. Yeah, look at this. Great. Oh, this is beautiful with the blue. Yeah, you never know yeah. what you're going to get. It's yeah. a, it's a, a crapshoot. You do, yeah. you, you pray to the fire gods to hope it comes through. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Shirley, it's an honor to have you and it's so much fun to show what's behind the scenes. We're going to continue this next Friday. Yes, we will. And you're going to bring us some photos and maybe some more video too from from your studio. We'll sure. see what happens. We'll see what happens. But to all of you, we thank you so much. We love you. We feel blessed to have you involved in this entire process. So please come back next Friday and watch what Shirley has to do, and we'll continue this entire. Please. We look forward to seeing yeah. you.